There are a lot of very legitimate use cases where you want to cancel an action you've taken, such as you no longer need that Uber ride that you just ordered, or you are reconsidering some purchases from the night before. But what is the use case where someone is halfway through a form and then decides, nah, never mind, I'm just gonna delete all of my answers. Starting off my list of form design mistakes is including some sort of cancel, reset, or clear button. You'd think this one's a bit of a no-brainer, but I still see them from time to time, so I thought I'd start with something easy and then work our way up. In the early days of the web, they were initially provided to give people peace of mind that the machines hadn't stolen their information. So if you were filling out a form and you changed your mind, it was kind of a confirmation that you hadn't submitted your information. But this quickly became a nuisance. Even way back in Y2K, Jacob Nielsen was warning people, don't do this, it's a terrible idea. Just imagine filling out this long form and then you accidentally click on the wrong button. Maybe your finger slips on your phone, maybe you were using the tab key and hit enter before you realized, or maybe you've just had a long day and were thinking about something else. It's a horribly frustrating experience that could have been avoided entirely. Is it possible that someone out there has used this button successfully? Absolutely. Is it also far more likely that the vast majority of these button pushes are unintentional? You betcha. The amount of frustration caused by hitting this by accident just isn't worth the benefit. Side note that this is a great example of why qualitative usability testing, or getting real users to walk through your site while you observe, can add context to site analytics. I've encountered cases where someone could see an analytics tracking, oh, people are clicking this button, we should keep it. And I was like, yeah, but they're clicking it by mistake. They don't like this. And just in case you somehow aren't sold at this point, one final point as to why these buttons are bad, in good UX design, it's always super clear what the next step should be. Even if you're looking at a site in another language, you should be able to tell through the design what the next step is. What I like to call the don't make me think principle after Steve Krug's classic UX book. In cases like these where there are multiple buttons, all with the same design treatment, the user has to pause in their flow to stop and check which is the correct option and which is the equivalent of clicking the bomb in Minesweeper. You tend to see them quite often on government sites. They're pretty common on a variety of state services pages. While you could interpret this as being intentionally detrimental, what we call in UX a dark pattern, it's probably just ignorance. And that's uh, what this video is for. If you're lucky, they will have a warning to let you know you're about to lose all the information you just put in, but that is not a given. Occasionally you'll see one of these bad boys pop up on a business website where there is a legitimate benefit to the site on the line. Presumably the site does want you to inquire about becoming a customer. For the most part, designers and developers have realized this is a pretty toxic button to include, but you still see a few of them hanging around, so be careful. Ultimately, the moral of the story is that people make mistakes, just happens. So as designers, we want to try to identify where those mistakes might happen, anticipate what might cause them, and then offer ways to avoid them or recover from them if they're unavoidable. That's the first part of this series. I'll keep it quick because you can keep on watching using the links above and below.